We've got these files on our disk, and now we're going to run MLab and show how we use them. So here's an icon for MLab, and we go click, click, and we run the MLab program. The first thing that MLab does is it says, well, MLab, look at some demonstrations, and we're not going to do that, uh, but we could, and you should. However, we're going to go to top level MLab, click and continue. And MLab says to us, MLab Mathematical Modeling System, executing the file, uh, MLab, it's actually MLab.exe, and I, we didn't say that for some reason, in the directory MLab, in the, in the directory backslash, on the drive C colon. Uh, here's our website, www.civilized.com, where you could learn about MLab. And today's date is July 13, and your current working directory is also uh, C colon MLab. You can have other working directories, uh, but this is where you start out. This is where MLab will look for files when you tell it to read a file, uh, unless you change something. Uh, and it's called your working directory. You also have something on your computer called your home directory. Uh, but that's a different directory yet again. You can make that your working directory if you want to. Uh, file dir is a, a control variable in which you set paths to, to reach other directories. We'll talk about that another day. Uh, and finally, MLab says type exit to exit from MLab and gives a star which is a prompt for a command. So MLab obeys commands, and you can say things like type the cosine of 45 degrees. But of course, it isn't degrees, is it? Cosine, it takes radian units as input, so you do not get what you think. But of course, if you said type cosine D, meaning cosine in degrees, 45 degrees, then you would get the famous uh, value of the cosine of 45 degrees. Uh, now, um, uh, MLab can also, and most importantly for our purposes, tell us what's in our working directory. Type DIR. And there is a list of all the files truthfully listed uh, for our working directory, which is the MLab directory. And we can scroll back using arrow keys. You'll notice there's no scroll bars in the MLab console window, in the text window for MLab. Using the arrow keys, you can scroll back to read this text. So we've got a lot of files here, and one of them is minmod1.dat. Another one is minmod a.do, and another one is minmod x.do. Uh, and we've got a lot of other files. There's, by the way, the actual executable file for MLab, mlab.exe. Okay, and we are going to, and here's some stuff that was we were using to play around uh, some other day, toy.dat, toy.do. Okay, and now we are going to look at the file uh, type. Uh, min mod one dot dat the data file and oh that didn't work why not because we didn't say it was a file and MLab doesn't know any better it thinks you're trying to look up some variable called min mod one dot dat and doesn't exist and doesn't have a value but if we were to um, uh, if we were to go up here and hit um, insert and bring it down here for editing and go over here and say space file space and give the command type file minmod1.dat then the file types out and again using the arrow key to scroll we can go right up here to where that was here's the command type file minmod1.dat and what typed out is file colon minmod1.dat you may see that there and then the contents of the file the first line is quote test.dat which of course is uh, a uh, mistake it should have been the name of the file minmod1 but 
some old name was test and it was called test.dat. This file is, is uh, the quotes, by the way, are comments. So each line is just a comment. It is not uh, anything that MLAB will pay attention to. And another comment saying what the data is and what it is is, uh, uh, and there's another comment. The headings are actually a comment. But then comes a row of three numbers and another row of three numbers starting with three and another row starting with five and so on. The first column is time in minutes. The second column is the amount of glucose in a patient's blood after an injection of glucose starting at time zero or starting at just a little bit before time zero actually, um, which was uh, 93 milligrams per deciliter at time zero. And at three minutes, it was 563 milligrams per deciliter of glucose, and so on. You can see the glucose is rising in the blood very sharply, and then almost immediately starts to decay away, getting smaller and smaller, until at time 180 minutes, that's three hours, uh, the glucose in the blood has gone down to 86 uh, milligrams per deciliter of glucose. And in the third column of this data is the measurement of the amount of insulin in the blood. And at time zero, that's three micro units of insulin uh, per milliliter of blood. And in three minutes, that insulin has risen in the blood to 155 micro units of, of, uh, per milliliter. And that insulin response is what we expect to see in a person who's just had a big uh, chunk of sugar injected into them. So that insulin rises quickly. And then uh, we uh, decay away as the glucose is consumed uh, or otherwise dealt with uh, and go drop down to a negligible insulin level in, in three hours. Um, what we want to do is uh, take a differential equation model that describes this rise and fall, in fact, only the fall of glucose and the corresponding fall of insulin, uh, and describe how this model fits the data and what we can do with the fit parameters that we compute.